Hello. I want to show you my business card. Linda Lee Hargrove, Reconciling Faith and Fiction. And not just to show off my business card and my graphic design skills, but to also tell you about the bigger reason why I write fiction. I write it to reconcile faith, Christian belief, with fiction. And to use fiction as a discussion tool, as a vehicle for Christians to get beyond race. Jesus told stories, parables, as we know it in modern lingo, but he told them for a purpose. The, beyond the entertainment value, beyond the ooh and the ah, and what is he talking about, and drawing the crowds. But he had a purpose behind his fiction. And I have a purpose behind my fiction. I would hope that they are good stories. But I have a mandate. And I get that mandate from the Word of God. Right about uh, 1994, I started studying John, the book of John in the Bible. Just wanted to do an in-depth study. And in 17, the, the 17th chapter, I started reading about Jesus' prayer. And yeah, this was not the first time I had read the Gospels, Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But for some reason, chapter 17 just leaped off the page. And it was like I had never read it before. Particularly this verse in John 17, 21. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me. And this is Jesus praying to Father God. And I in you, that they, his followers, his disciples, that they also may be one in us. Capital U, S, us, as in God, Father, God, Son, and God, the Spirit, that the world may believe that you sent me. And that prayer hit me. Like, while Jesus is, Jesus is praying for us, his followers, his disciples on earth, and we're not taking it serious enough. We're not coming in lockstep with our Savior who prayed for us before he gave himself up for us. So, long story short, uh, I felt a mandate to do, to come in lockstep with that prayer, to make it a reality that others may know and be drawn to him, not to me, not to praise me for my great books, but to say, what a great Savior. What a great Savior. So I started writing. The first book I wrote is The Making of Isaac Hunt, and it was published in 2007 by Moody Publisher. Uh, they have a, a urban books imprint. African-American uh, biracial man, actually, Isaac, that went on a journey of discovery for himself, a, a racial identity discovery, but also a discovery for love that involved making some really tough choices for forgiveness and reconciling. And I, I published uh, two other books in the series, and I call them Reconcilers Fiction. Now, not that reconciliation is fictional or that it's lighthearted. I think these are uh, troubling times, and... I think that we can use any vehicle to get past those issues of race and racism, all the isms that separate us, that drive us apart. Whether that's fiction, whether that's music, whether that's art. Um, I believe God is, is giving us those gifts to help us with some of the tough issues that we face, and, and racism in, uh, in the U.S. particularly, is one that uh, I think those gifts can help us with. 
during the um, ten-year period that my husband and I co-led racial reconciliation supper clubs, we used this book more than equals a lot. We committed to going through the book, reading through chapter by chapter, meeting in homes and church basements and over dinner, and uh, we called it Supper Club. At least a couple hours a month, we would get together and share a meal and get into the chapter. Sometimes we, we would talk about things that were in the news. This was on the heels of the Rodney King verdict, um, lots of racial upheaval then that had riots, people riding in the streets, people um, being, blacks being dragged behind cars uh, in rural areas of, of whites that were angry, that were racially motivated. People being attacked at night. It was racially motivated, it was racial hate crimes. Um, those kinds of things were in the news almost every day. We talked about them. Christian, white Christian, with black Christian. We talked about how they made us feel. But we also talked about what our response should be as Christians. We looked to the Word. We looked to God. We prayed. We fasted. And we moved to action. One of those actions that um, my husband and I did, it was a sort of radical, was to follow uh, one of the three R's in this book by John, Dr. John M. Perkins, Beyond Charity. The first R being relocation. So we relocated to a community of, uh, of low resources. We went to the hood. We bought a house in the hood. On purpose. Uh, here, we, well, here we were, there we were with um, lots of ed education between us. We could have lived anywhere. Both of us being engineers, we could have lived anywhere, but we chose to live in the hood. We lived there for uh, a number of years, taking part in ministry, becoming friends, becoming good neighbors, helping them raise their kids and, uh, and allowing them into our lives. To help us raise our little ones. Uh, it was not always easy, but I, I wouldn't give those years up for anything. And during that time is when we, my husband and I, co-led those uh, discussion groups. Sometimes, yeah, me, it meant coming into the rough part of the, the city to uh, talk about race and racism. So that's why I write fiction with those racial undertones. Um, I, and I bring in a redeeming nature. I, I bring in the nature of God. I bring in the nature of he, him that he puts in his followers. That it, I, I pull in the, the entertainment value, the humor, the, um, the drama. But I try to leave a, a redeeming takeaway. If you uh, want to leave me a comment in the in the box below, that would be great. Do um, do contact me on my website, llhargrove.com. I'll show my business card again. Of course, all of this information is, except for my phone number, that is not my real phone number. <laughs> uh, all that information is in the description box below. Thanks a lot.